So we have a series of dates here on the top. They want us to take these dates and convert it to end of quarter date. And as an example, the date in cell F5 is the 2nd of March, 2011. So if the month is January, February, or March, they want us to set it to the end of the quarter, March 31st. Likewise, if the months are April, May, or June, they want us to set to the end of the second quarter, or June 30. If the months are July, August, or September, the third quarter, or September 30. And finally, if the months are October, November, or December, the fourth quarter, December 31st. So this is very similar to an if then, so we can use the ifs function. So if our months are one, two, or three for January, February, or March, we'll set the date to the year in the cell, and then the end of the quarter, or March 31st. If our months are four, five, or six for April, May, or June, We'll set the date to the year in the cell and then the end of the quarter, June 30. If our months are seven, eight, or nine for July, August, or September, we'll set our date to the year in the cell and the end of the quarter, September 30. And finally, if our months are 10, 11, or 12 for October, November, or December, we'll set our date to the year in the cell and the end of the quarter, December 31st. So we can copy this into Excel. First number is 161053. Next, they want us to write a formula that returns the prior quarter. So not the current quarter, but the prior quarter. So very, very similar. Again, as an example, F5 is 2nd of March, 2011. And so if the months are January, February, or March, we'll set it to the prior quarter, which will be December 31st. If the months are April, May, or June, we'll set to the prior quarter, the first quarter being March 31st. If the months are in the third quarter, July, August, or September, they want us to set the quarter date to the end of the second quarter or June 30th. And finally, if it's the fourth quarter, they want us to set it to the third quarter. So we'll also use an if statement for months being one two or three january february or march we'll set the date to the year in the cell and then minus one the first quarter is the only quarter where we have to go go back a year so we're going to go back to december 31st and then we'll continue on if the months are four five and six for april may or june we want to go to the first quarter first quarter is still the current year so we'll go to the first quarter in march 31st if the months are seven, eight, or nine for July, August, or September, still in the current quarter, in the current year, and we'll go back a quarter, June 30. And then if the months are 10, 11, or 12 for October, November, or December, still the same year, we'll just go back a quarter or nine, September 30th. So we can copy this into Excel. And as you can see, we went to the prior quarter. This is the first quarter, and this is the prior. Our second answer is 160876. Uh, now we're going to look at a loan schedule. And they're going to want us to calculate the payment amounts give us some information here. They're telling us the loan amount is $50,000. The interest rate is 9.75%. And then we have to divide that by 12 because it's a monthly rate that we need. And they're telling us to use the payment function and assume that any additional payments are zero. So our rate is 9.75 and we have to remember to lock it because we're going to use that for everything. And 
the number of repayment periods are 36. We could lock this as well. And then the present value is 50,000. One, two, three. So our payment every month, our monthly payment will be $1,600. And there we go. Next, they want us to complete the model by calculating um, the interest payments. And they're telling us additional payments are zero and any drawdown is, is zero. So those two columns will be zero. we can use a formula to calculate the interest payment will be the opening balance times the interest rate and we have to divide by 12 because we're after the monthly rate our opening balance will always be our prior closing balance interest rate is going to be our opening balance times our interest rate and then we have to lock this F4 and we're dividing by 12 to get the monthly rate Our schedule payments were prior already calculated. We just have to remember to F4 lock it. It's the same payment every month. And now they want us to find out the February balance. So that's going to be 36,236 and 18 cents. And then the total interest on this loan We'll just sum up the interest payments, 7869 Now they're assuming that there was extra money available and we made an additional payment of $10,000 in January. So we'll enter negative 10000 at G36. And then they want us to calculate the new payment amounts. So our new payment amount, we'll use the payment function. interest rate is going to be again 9.75% and we have to remember to lock it and divide by 12. Number of repayments is still 36. We have to subtract. We have to lock this because it's always 36. We have to subtract the 10 or so we made already. And then the present value is the current amount of the loan. So our new payment amount is $1,179. And then they want the new total interest on the loan. And the new total interest, if we just sum the new interest up, that will be $6,700. Now we're going to move on to net present value and internal rates of return. So we'll take a look at row 67.
They want us to calculate the internal rate for the bank, for all the cash flows from E73, and then express this as an annual rate. So very thankfully, Excel has a formula for IRR, and that is all of our values all of our cash flow values. And then they want it annualized. So we'll take monthly rate, simply times 12. And that gets us 7.5%. And now they're gonna give us a different interest calculation rate The bank wants to use this formula for our interest amount. So we'll calculate our new interest amount using this formula of the opening balance times annual rate and times the days in period. And the days in period is the period payment date minus the previous period payment date. same seven and a half percent now we have to do the days and period or the period payment date and we are on 20th of April and then subtract the prior period payment date and then divide by the days in the year, 365. So our new closing balance is $2.54. Now they want us to calculate the net present value of the loan. And so we'll calculate the net present value. They want us to use 4%. And they're telling us to hint to convert this rate to a monthly rate. Thankfully, Excel has a formula. So the rate that they're giving us now is 4%. We have to divide by 12. And the value of all of our cash flows And importantly, we have to remember, since we're after the net present value, we have to remember to add back in our initial outlay. And so that comes out to 362. And now finally, we're going to take a look at a depreciation schedule. So they want us to depreciate this asset that has an initial balance of 5,000, 20 year lifespan with a $0 salvage value. And they're asking us to use the double declining balance. And starting in cell F122, 
or use the DDB function. Cost of our asset is fixed. It's not going to change. So F4. Salvage value is zero. Also fixed. Not going to change. F4. The life 20. Also fixed. Not going to change. F4. And the number of periods is, or the period that we're currently in, is one and that will change year to year okay and then they want the sum of years 10 to 5 so we could use And that is nine hundred and seven dollars and sixty five cents. Finally, they want us to use a new formula uh, to calculate the depreciation as well as an additional amount to be depreciated of $1,500 and then some uh, amount of the depreciation. So for our new formula, they want us to use negative one times the opening balance. Opening balance is again, 5,000 times the double declining balance factor and that factor will be fixed as well so F4 divided by the life of the asset and that will be fixed at 20 so F4 again just put these in parentheses They gave us an additional amount of 1500 to depreciate in year 10. Over here in year five. 1500. Then they want us to sum the total depreciation for the. So that is thirteen hundred and sixty eight and seventy eight cents i hope you found this helpful consider downloading my course era excel course notes in the link below follow along the course era excel for business specialization with this color-coded high yield comprehensive five-page course guide organized chronologically by all courses check your email for downloads thank you